Hi, um, this is Jackie, and uh, I'm doing this video because I just finished um, watching a video about uh, Marilyn Monroe, and um, I I just wanted to kind of uh, have a recollection of what it felt like to have to try to study her biography. I usually I just wanted to know. Um, what fascinates me with biography is that, you know, there's a beginning and an end in life. And in every one of us, there is an end. And in that video, it was, um, I didn't like that it sort of ended in a defeat that that always wins. And that is perhaps only because, you know, I am a Christian and I don't believe that death really wins in the end. Um... Something about Marilyn Monroe really hit home with me from the time I saw her biography. And even though she had been dead before I was even born, somehow it still touched me. And I, I don't know why, because most celebrities, I, I honestly, you know, if I barely know them, it's hard for me to honestly cry. Um, I only cried for Whitney Houston. And... Uh, but um, having studied the life of Marilyn Monroe and some of the hearing her voice and everything, it just, it really, it sort of made me cry, like, to see it in the end. You know, it just, um, and it reminded me a lot of how I, um, as an eight-year-old, I saw my father's, grandfather's um, face, and it was all smothered because it's three days after he was murdered. And uh, it was, I, I somehow had to see it, even though I wasn't supposed to look at it. And my grandfather's that, you know, I didn't know who really killed him uh, up until 30 years later. I was 38 when I found out about um, who it is that killed my grandfather. Um, and it became very revealing to me. I, I felt quite a bit of closure there because for many years, um, since I was eight, I've always wanted to know. I, and at one point I wanted to be a coroner because I wanted to know what could have killed him. And, you know, there's a biblical statement. I have to research it actually, what verse it is. You know, all that, um, there is nothing, there is nothing... There is no secret. It will all be told. And oh, I forgot. Anyhow, I am just sort of like having a a grief, you know, that sense of grief at this moment. So I can't even figure out the words. Um, nothing that is hidden, will, all that is hidden will be found. And I always believed that as a child. And it went years, you know, 30 years before I even found out who killed my grandfather. And, um, you know, it, we found out eventually he was, he was murdered by a servant's son who he had accepted this family like his own and put the place nearby where he lived because he trusted that um, cook who was a very good cook, and he was the one who paid for him to get married, and he also um, kind of like took in, especially one of the sons is very good, and he took that son like his own, and he would have this son come over and help him, but then the older brother, he wasn't, he was into um, drinking or whatever, and he would ask him for money, and I guess at some point he just don't feel like giving any money. And, um, Granted that my grandfather was raised poor, he, I guess, felt like it was unnecessary, and it wasn't like, um, but I guess this boy, yeah, this, this man wanted money from him and felt like he was being greedy because he is technically, he's got money. And um, this death took place from the outside of the of the house it was in the it's got concrete walls as a fence and um, he was doing carpentry and he was hit by this man on the head with a flashlight 
and then he it and I remember it, they said that there was a brownout so I think the guy after he did that he didn't mean to I think kill my grandfather and then he knew when he had fallen this is a judge and therefore if he was to remain alive he would be in prison or something he would be sentenced for something so he kind of did him in and um, took him up to the attic so he knew the house so I'm gonna go over that next time but I, yeah, I don't want to mumbo jumbo it but I think this is the reason what calls me to what what it is about Marilyn Monroe's story that I am so caught up with her uh, even though I initially I don't really want to use Marilyn Monroe for anything that I'm gonna write about because it's very tragic. I mean, she died young, and she is also not really. There, there wasn't so much in her life that, that I could say was so redemptive, um, other than the camera. And so I remember when I had, thought about using her for a story. I literally asked the Lord of well, what's her significance? I mean, she's not known to be a Christian, but. At the same token, I had this, uh, I have this sort of, um, you know, I have, I have this word that's sort of like telling me it's not up to you to know. So, um, I think in my heart, deeply, I think somehow because of all the pain that she's gone through even though she didn't make a clear proclamation that she is a Christian I know that the Lord can at the very last minute of your life appear and speak and and the, there is the presence of the Lord when you meet him you know it's him you know it's not a question this person came for you and um, that's what she was looking for she's reaching for a man to fill the hole in her heart she's reaching for a father figure and that's what God is he is a father figure and none of these men he's married were associated with had that wholeness of a father and I was studying how she was and how she became this actress. And with me, I did stand-up comedy. And the, the one thing with stand-up comedy is you be you. You could be you. You can be the exaggerated you. But you're you. You don't have to be something else. You can be very frank. Like you are very frank. So with Marilyn Monroe, having had that mother that had issues and not really very accepting of her I had a feeling she was always afraid to say the wrong things and then she perhaps sees that her mother only let out with a certain facial expression this cuteness so you're always wanting to be cute and like this voice that is kind of childish it is a sign of it's a regression and she find that is very attractive so instead of having a normal voice like this because you know her vocal range can go down she always gets hi I don't know what to say about that and so that is a very regress that's a very kind of childish way of speaking but and most women have that I mean gay men kind of try to emulate that speech like hi how are you oh really oh you know and, and uh, having to be so sexual all the time because the physical contact is what makes her feel loved other than that the camera the camera is her lover oh they're gonna the moment they say take take she loves to hear that word take and uh, and in a sense she's sort of comical and she sees the comedy in her and she sees the drama but it get to a point that actually have her her own husband had her act herself gave her a script that is like her story that is who she is and that doesn't really help I don't think however it is what she had to do and and 
in life, if life, life is a stage and everybody plays a part, we have it before we come here. Our souls exist. And then when you die, your soul, if you were to acknowledge that, Father, that soul exists and eternal. So it isn't a defeat. It isn't death. And so after seeing, um, I, I, I'm doing a lot of my short films in a dedication for other people. And the Beyond the Wilderness, I dedicated that to my best friend, who, um, whether intentional or unintentionally, she killed herself. And I still, to this day, um, I'm not ready to know the details of how or why. I, I know I have an idea why, but I don't want to know uh, because I wanted to just remember her. We were almost the same age. We are, our birthdays are close. She's January 14, and um, and I'm December 2nd. And we were both therapists. And to see another therapist die like that at such an early age, even after two kids. I Marilyn Monroe, they think, well, she died because she's childless. My best friend died. And she had two kids. So um, the, I don't know what could have happened. But this emotional instability. And so I'm kind of like, um, it's like when I cried for Marilyn Monroe, it was just, I, it's the Norma Jean. Like Norma Jean created Marilyn Monroe. So Marilyn Monroe didn't die. Because Marilyn Monroe is what she created. But the Norma Jean where her soul is right now. I still kind of believe that because I know that the Lord can appear to people who are in need, she was holding the line. She held the phone, trying to call for somebody. She could barely say, help me. What is I find really fascinating is that back in the days, the phones are dialed. So how Marilyn Monroe was able to dial, but... That's quite a coordination for somebody on barbiturate. So who was dialing that phone? Who was allowing her to dial? Because I, I just don't know how people could be so coordinated when you're in, when you're so doped up. So I, I, I don't know. I, I wish I could make a phone call to the Lord Yeshua and say, Hey, were you there? Because I've seen the Lord show up for me. And I don't doubt that the Lord can show up for her. Even though she is, you know, she looked very liberal. But she is who she is. And she is allowed to choose her life. And the Lord allowed her to choose her life. Now, at the end, would she have chosen in Jesus and severe need if she had, if the Lord does show up to her? Could she say no? So I'm um, making this video because I want people to realize that there is a lot of people out there who is a lot like Marilyn Monroe. They may not be, they may not be famous, but they are beautiful souls. And Marilyn Monroe, Norma Jean, Norma Jean. is a soul and every one of us have a soul and I believe Norma Jean exhibited that she wanted to show she wanted to capture her face you know she wanted to capture her face and stay happy she always liked to show her expression and um, she related to people and that's what Jesus Christ did he related to people um, except Yeshua or Jesus Christ is not only a real man, he was also God, eternal. And even the, the Son of God is willing to lay down his life for every one of us out of love. And that is the love that Marilyn Monroe is missing. So thank you very much. And to Norma Jean, so...
and one day I will do a short film for you and for everyone like you.